is up everybody, it is Miss Vadams here and welcome to the next episode in the ARC Beginner's Guide series where I will be showing you how to make kibble all the way from basic kibble through to extraordinary kibble. And why do we need to create kibble you ask? Well kibble is a dino superfood and it means that taming is going to become much quicker and we're also going to gain the maximum amount of post-tame levels on a dino so it's going to improve the taming effectiveness as well so a really important food to be crafting and the major ingredient we are going to need for our kibble today are eggs we're going to need extra small eggs all the way through to special eggs and luckily I have been around and tamed all of the dinos that we need in order to make our kibble farm. You're going to need breeding pairs of dinos that can produce every single size of egg. So I've got dodos over here for my extra small eggs, pterodons for the small eggs, baryonyx for the medium eggs. We've got moss chops and argentavis for our large eggs. For our extra large eggs, we've got the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Thank you so much for the names, by the way. The best was Rexana for female and Mark Bolan. Loving the reference for male. Thank you so much for the comments on the last stream when we tamed those. And then over here, we've got our Uteranus, who are going to be providing us with our special eggs. So it's really important that whichever dinosaurs you choose, you get a breeding pair because that is going to increase the uh, frequency at which the eggs are laid by the females. Obviously, the more females you can afford to have out, the more eggs you're going to get. Another important thing we're making a kibble farm in terms of egg production is taming this thing here this is an oviraptor it is a knockout tame you will need a bowler to hold it down whilst you knock it out you can find these all over the island but i managed to find mine on the south beach in about this location here on the map and you tame these by feeding them eggs they do prefer um certain eggs over others they prefer things like giga eggs i don't have any gigas at the moment so i ended up feeding it some rex eggs in the end but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab one of these and you're going to want to put a bunch of stuff in its inventory. I have picked stone, but essentially you're going to want to weigh it down so it can't move because you're going to want to put it on wonder. So we go behavior, enable wandering. So it's technically wandering, but it can't move because it's weighed down. And what is going to happen now is you can just about see it. There is a flashing egg symbol above its head. And in fact, there is a flashing egg symbol above all of our dinos' heads now. And that means that the egg production rate has been increased yet again. So a really important dinosaur to tame if you're making a kibble farm on official or you're playing unmodded, which we are at the moment. We are doing single player unmodded today. Another crucial component in your kibble farm is going to be a greenhouse, which we actually set up a few episodes ago. I will link that video in the description to this video in case you need to see how to go about setting up your own greenhouse. But we are going to need to plant one of each type of crop for our kibble. We're going to need long grass. We're going to need rock carrots savour root and also citronelle and you're also going to need access to honey as well for convenience i have my own hive here and then to actually craft your kibble you are either going to need a primitive cook pot or an industrial cooker and in terms of ingredients there's a, a couple of ingredients that you're going to need for every type of kibble and that is water and fiber and i've built my my cook pot very close to the uh the water tap here so i can transfer water back and forth because you're going to need one jar of water per piece of kibble crafted if you're using a primitive cook pot so for basic kibble this is the recipe we're going to need 10 amar berry we are going to need one cooked meat one extra small egg my extra small egg is coming in the form of a dodo egg you can actually use fertilized eggs to make kibble as well which is what i'm doing here then we've got the medjo berries we need five of those and 10 tinto berries make sure there's fuel in the primitive cook pot light fire and then it will take 30 seconds for a piece of kibble to be crafted we just have to wait for it. Now I'm gonna include a link to the relevant wiki recipes and pages in the uh, in the description of this video so that you can find that because I understand that the uh, the recipes for the kibble and things don't appear in the vanilla cook pot. So you're gonna yeah you're gonna want to have that on hand until you've memorized it. And here we go. We've got a basic kibble. Fantastic. For simple kibble, we are going to need one cooked fish meat one small egg which is coming in the form of a pterodon five medjo berries two rock carrots and then again we wait 30 seconds for this and there we have it simple kibble created fantastic so moving on to the next one for regular kibble we are going to need one medium egg 
which is a baryonyx egg. That's the one I have. We are going to need two long grass, two sava roots, and then we're going to need a new item. We're going to need some cooked meat jerky. And in order to craft cooked meat jerky, all you need to do is make a preserving bin, which you can do from your inventory. You power it with spark powder. And then you need to put in some cooked meat and some oil. And over time, that will produce cooked meat jerky, which we're going to need for this kibble today. I have no idea why I've got basic kibble in there, but I'll take that. So back to the cook pot. In any second now, we should get our blue regular kibble being crafted. There we go. Fantastic. So, for the next kibble, which is superior kibble, we have, again, another new ingredient that we are going to need to go out and gather. We are going to need some tree sap, which on the island is produced using a sap tap. And we can craft sap taps here in our smithy. We're going to need to learn a couple of engrams. The tree sap tap at level 36. We're also going to need to learn a tree platform as well in order to reach the sap taps. So we craft both of these things inside of the smithy. The sap tap, I'm going to make four of them. We should be able to put four um, around the kind of snap points on the tree. And then the tree platform, wooden tree platform, I'm short of fiber apparently. So I might have to go out and grab a bit of that. Let me see if we got any in here. We have not. Okay, give me two ticks. I'm going to go grab some fiber. All right, there we go. I've got my fiber. The tree platform. The tree platform is quite expensive to make. You can make a metal one, but to be honest, I'm just going to make a wooden one for now. But it is going to require 1,600 wood, 200 metal lingot, 600 fiber, and 600 cementing paste. And then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to affix the tree platform to one of the big redwood trees. So it's important that you, you do this in the redwoods. They won't fix to any other trees. Why am I so slow? <laughs> my goodness, let me have a look. What is in my inventory here? I get rid of a uh, few things for a second. There we go. I should do it. Let's grab Goldie, the Argentavis, and we'll go out and put our... Uh, our tree platform up. Luckily, I've already built in the redwoods, so I don't have to go too far. So, let's have a look. This this tree will do. Why not? You just have it on your hotbar, be on your flyer, and where it's green, click, snap, place. And then for your taps, we should be able to put four in here. See why we need the platform now. And then these will automatically collect sap over time, so we're going to have to wait a little bit. So what I tend to do is if I'm playing on a server, I tend to leave these unlocked so that other people can use them as well. But because I'm on single player, it doesn't matter. We're just going to have to chill here for a little bit until this thing starts to produce sap. So we'll be back in a bit. So I've only been gone about five minutes. And in that time, we already have one sap. And since we only need one piece of sap for this recipe, that will do quite fine. But we should find that, yeah, we have one piece from... Uh, from each tap here so uh yeah not long to wait at all for that makes a funny little noise when you put it in your inventory i've only just noticed that listen bloop, bloop. okay right let's take that back to base and craft our next kibble which is going to be the superior kibble so for the superior kibble we are going to need two citronel we're going to need one prime meat jerky. Prime meat jerky is made in the same way as cooked meat jerky. It's just with prime meat instead of uh, regular meat. The prime meat jerky in there. Large egg. Our large egg is coming from a moss chops today. Rare mushroom. I went out and gathered a bunch of rare mushrooms from beaver dams. But you can also gather them from the swamp trees as well. You can harvest them with a therizinosaur, for example. And then we're going to add in our sap. Sit tight for 30 seconds and then we should get our kibble. And there we have it, superior kibble. So for the next kibble, which is exceptional kibble, we are going to need the following. Let me just clear some of these ingredients out here so we've got space. We are going to need an extra large egg, which is going to be my Rex egg. I'm going to need 10 medjo berries, one rare flower. Again, raided some beaver dams to get my rare flowers. And then we're going to need something called focal chili. Now, focal chili is a separate dish that needs crafting. And in order to make focal chili, we are going to need nine cooked meat or fish meat. We're going to need five citronelle, 20 amar berry, 20 azul berry, 
20 Tinto Berry and 10 Medri Berries, which we already have in here. Looks like we're out of water. So again, we're going to have to wait about a minute for this focal chili to, to be made. And then we should have exactly what we need to craft our extraordinary kibble. Took about a minute to make the focal chili. And then we should be getting our exceptional kibble any second now. Oh no! I didn't put any fresh water in. Yeah, always make sure to have one water jar per thing you're crafting. Otherwise, I would have been sat here for ages just waiting. And there we go, one exceptional kibble. Now for the last kibble, which is extraordinary kibble, we're going to need a few extra things. We are going to need our special egg, which is from a Uteranus. I do think breeding Uteranus with special eggs is the easiest way to do so. so I'm going to grab my Uteranus egg. I'm also going to need some medjo berries, 10 medjo berries. We're also going to need giant bee honey and Lazarus chowder. So for giant bee honey, I do have my beehive, which we uh, which we sorted out a few episodes ago. If I'm going to collect honey from the hive, I do want to be making sure I'm wearing full ghillie so that the bees don't damage me. There we go. Grab one of those. Well, they do damage me slightly, but no way near as badly as if you were wearing the ghillie. So I grab my honey, pop that in there. For Lazarus chowder, I'm going to need nine cooked meat or fish meat. I'm going to need five sava root, five long grass, ten medjo berries, two narcotics. Let's light the fire, put an extra water in there as well and wait till these things are crafted up. Our Lazarus chowder took about a minute to craft. We should be getting our extraordinary kibble any second now. There we go, that light blue kibble just there. And that is how you go about producing basic, simple, regular, superior, exceptional, and extraordinary kibble. There we go. So I think, folks, that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out for this slightly shorter kibble guide episode. I will be back next time with a breeding and imprinting guide for beginners. So do make sure to check out that video when it comes out. And if you miss me in the meantime, you can catch me over on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday at 2pm GMT. So until then, see you later.